here is the video we are see, going to see the carotid sheath and the structures present inside the carotid sheath now i will show you one by one this is the triangle carotid triangle you can see here the superior belly of homo hair and this is the sternocleidum astroid and here in the superior aspect you are having the posterior belly of digastric so these three they form the carotid triangle inside that only you have the carotid sheath carotid sheath is nothing but the modification and extension of the deep cervical fascia and here in the anterior to the carotid sheath you could see nicely the ansa cervicalis you can see the ansa right ansa cervicalis is a chain which is worn by the descendants hypoglossal this is the hypoglossal nerve from the hypoglossal nerve the descending fibers are coming down along with the ventral rami of c1 cervical uh, nerve 1 is a purely motor nerve you can see from the cervical nerve plexus will be coming from the posterior border of the sternocleidum astroid and here the first cervical rami they join with the hypoglossal nerve and they descend down as descendant hypoglossi and one part of the c1 cervical nerve will be going here this is your thyrohyoid look at this this is the superior belly of homo hyoid if i reflect this this is the thyroid cartilage right thyroid cartilage so thyroid to hyoid bone this is the hyoid bone so this is a muscle called thyrohyoid muscle so this fibers you can see this is the hypoglossi from there the few fibers will be going and they supply the you can see nicely i am taking this this is the cervical one and join with the descendant hypoglossi and they supply the thyrohyoid and the geniohyoid another one fiber is coming down as descendant hypoglossi and they form the c2 c3 uh, cervical nerves they form descendant cervicalis so descendant cervicalis and descendants hypoglossi they join together and forms a chain called ansa cervicalis this ansa cervicalis supplies the strap muscles infrahyoid muscles sternohyoid and sternothyroid and inferior belly of homo hyoid this is the inferior belly of homo hyoid you can see you no know, inferior belly of homo hyoid these three muscles the superior belly of homo hyoid is supplied by the descendants hypoglossi descendants hypoglossi and the thyrohyoid and geniohyoid are supplied by the c1 fibers joined with the uh, hypoglossal nerve and they supply the thyrohyoid and geniohyoid next we will see so anterior part of the carotid sheath you will be having the ansa cervicalis and the carotid sheath contents are number one internal jugular vein and number two common carotid artery in between these two you can see nicely the vagus nerve you can see the vagus nerve deep inside so internal jugular vein common carotid artery and the vagus nerve okay now what is the structure lying posteriorly if you see posteriorly posteriorly you could see the sympathetic chain how do you identify this as the sympathetic chain you could see that you can see the ganglia can understood this is ganglia can you see the bulge so this is the ganglia so the ganglion is there so try it. this is identified as sympathetic chain so sympathetic chain is posteriorly placed in the carotid sheath so posteriorly you have the sympathetic chain anteriorly you have the ansa cervicalis so now the content number one is internal jugular vein how the internal jugular vein is formed the look at this facial vein and retromandibular vein um, <coughs> anterior division they join together and forms the internal jugular vein how to identify this as facial vein you can see the submandibular salivary gland submandibular salivary gland is here so the vein is grooving the submandibular salivary gland that's why it is identified as facial vein and then number two is internal carotid artery is here and you can see the bifurcation of the internal carotid artery here this is the bulge so here is the bulge at the bifurcation site carotid sinus so this one outer externally placed is internal carotid artery and the one which is internally placed which has multiple branches that is called as external carotid artery so identify the ex we could identify the external carotid artery by this many branches so here one nerve which winds around the entire uh, carotid arteries and carotid sheath is hypoglossal now look at this hypoglossal now so this is the internal carotid artery which is placed outside 
and the external carotid which is placed inside at the site of bifurcation you have the carotid sinus carotid artery bifurcates at the level of the thyroid cartilage upper level of the thyroid cartilage look at this this is how we have to identify bits a disc between c3 and c4 this is where the carotid artery bifurcates now come down the vagus now you are seeing here what the vagus now uh, comes down and it gives branches here it gives a branch called external laryngeal now so superior laryngeal and inferior laryngeal are the branches from vagus so the external laryngeal now we could see here You could see the vagus. So this is the vagus. Uh, sorry, we are external laryngeal now, and down very nicely we could see the recurrent laryngeal now. Look at this. This nerve is coming down, and you see beneath it goes and recurves. Can you see the curve? The vagus now is this one. The vagus now. This is the nerve which is curving. So how to identify uh, whether it is recurrent laryngeal now or some other nerve? We just go here and see here. This is the other part of the nerve. Now I am holding the nerve here. You can see the nerve moving over there. So this is the recurrent laryngeal nerve, right? Recurrent laryngeal nerve which goes to the thyroid gland. And one more thing, recurrent laryngeal nerve it lies between the tracheoesophageal groove. So this is the trachea, and behind the esophagus it lies in the tracheoesophageal groove. That is a very important MCQ. So tracheoesophageal groove, what is the nerve lies? And see nicely, I am showing you the nerve recurves. This is the right recurrent laryngeal nerve. You can see the nerve binds or recurves around one artery. That is the artery called subclavian artery. Look at that. How much bulge you can see? See this subclavian. Okay, this is the carotid. So this is the subclavian. It binds around the right subclavian artery. So this is about the sheath and the contents. I have shown you the common carotid also, and <clears throat> this is about the carotid sheath and contents and the carotid triangle the floor of the carotid triangle we know we should know the muscles in the floor of the carotid triangle see look at this this is the thyro thyroid can you see the thyroid cartilage this is the thyroid and this is hyoid so this muscle is called thyrohyoid muscle and here hyoid bone is here hyoid bone from the hyoid bone you have one more muscle starts from the hyoid bone that is your hyoglossus how to identify the hyoglossus? <coughs> you can see the nerve. The nerve, hypoglossal nerve is going over here. So they can see this muscle. The nerve is lying on the hyoglossus muscle. So just these two, one thyrohyoid, second hyoglossus, third is middle constrictor and the fourth one is inferior constrictor. So these are the four muscles forming the floor of the carotid triangle. Number one, thyrohyoid number two hyoglossus number three middle constrictor number four is inferior constrictor so this form the floor of the carotid triangle so you can see all the structures so while showing the carotid sheath you should show the, all the three structures together you should show one two and three okay and posterior only you have the sympathetic chain how to differentiate the sympathetic chain from the vagus so this is the sympathetic chain and this is the vagus vagus you can see go down and then show them the vagus and sympathetic chain you have the ganglion so it is called a sympathetic chain